my name is Chris Hoffman. I'm Lisa Robinette, and I wanted to share my experience of the Intuitive Intensive with Crystal Ann Compton and Trisha Carr. The Intuitive Intensive was life-changing. I truly believe that the program is life-changing. Life-changing. <laughs> there we go, done. <laughs> life-changing. I am a intuitive reader, channel, and a psychic development teacher and coach. These are not words that I thought I would be describing myself as at the beginning of 2018. Sitting here as a graduate of the Intuitive Intensive, I can tell you how powerful the teachings are of Crystal Ann Compton, the founder of the Lightworkers Lab, and Trisha Carr. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I do love them so very much, and I am so grateful for the teachings that they have taught me through this course. Sign up for the Intuitive Intensive. Just keep saying yes and be open and go forward with your heart and with love, and you'll get to where you want to go. Really fun. Welcome to Charmed Life, a multimedia podcast discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. And I am your host, Trisha Carr. Welcome to this episode of Charmed Life with me and my BFF, my real tight, Crystal Ann Compton, intuitive channel and spiritual teacher. Yo! Yay! Hi, excited to be back. Yes. Excited to see your face. We've been seeing each other's face all week. We've been working hard, but I'm excited about this podcast because we're going to get into some interesting stuff. Like last time, we so we, we teased in the last episode about this one, and so we had to make sure we got on it and gave you this information, gave you this talk. We're, we're super excited about it. We're getting into kind of the, in a way, it's the deeper metaphysical information, and in another way, it's sort of like in the community of spiritual seekers or whatever you might call the... I don't like the word new age, but you know what I mean? Like the, the kind of this, this, this ascension community, I guess, is another way to look at it. And um, so I'm, I'm excited about it. But I think it's actually deeply helpful, too, to look at it in the way that you and I know. I know that you and I will. Yes, I think so as well. And I do want to preface by saying that anything we're talking about uh, today is not necessarily our endorsement or our personal opinion. We're going to be talking about something, as you said, that's being discussed presently in the spiritual community. And at some point we will offer our opinions about it, but like, don't get too caught up in the intricacies of, of the discussion because um, we're not espousing it as fact right. by and, any means. And yeah. And, uh, you know, I like to, we like to stay really just fluid and open there. There are t in general, because that's how you can really, that's when you're really working with wisdom is if you're fluid and open. So I, anything that I do sort of, we say as an opinion now, I, I, maybe that's going to be different next week. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I'm not holding tightly to anything, anything, any opinion I kind of land on for a moment is just helping me to get structure and maybe even deepen my awareness about the whole topic. And having said that, we're talking about a subject called the Lord's Well, wait, should we talk about the intuitive intensive yeah, really quickly? <laughs> we're going to do that. I, I just wanted to, because they're like, what are they even talking about? We're, gonna, oh, okay, we're about okay. to talk right. about a, a subject surrounding the Lords of Karma and a particular article that has gotten a lot of buzz called Why I Am No Longer a Lightworker by ascensionhelp.com. And I can't remember the person's name. I'll mention it in a moment because we're going to be really attributing a lot to his work on this. His name is Cameron something. I'll look it up. You can look it up for me. Cameron Day. Cameron Day. But what Crystal was saying that we have been hard at work this week because... So first of all, if you are new to the podcast, Crystal Ann Compton is an intuitive channel and spiritual teacher, and she and I are partners in a program, in many programs actually, through the Lightworkers Lab, which is an online spiritual community found on Facebook. Amazing, wonderful, really just, it's like I've said before, it's a kind of utopia, not patting ourselves on the back individually because Crystal is the founder and I am a moderator and we do a lot of work to really keep this intentional space along with many other moderators like Stephanie C. Weinman, who's an incredible intuitive as well, and many others. 
this space is um, a wonderful community to seek, to express, and to really just bathe yourself in total love. And the program that we are about to launch, we have just, um, as the time that we drop this, well, I think we're going to be able to drop this today because I'm going to make this this special episode we're kind of doing outside of my normal timeline of broadcast of um, a podcast release because we wanted to get it in and make sure everyone knew about the the intuitive intensive the 2020 intuitive intensive and i'll let you chat a bit about that crystal i'm sure people are <laughs> they're like i've heard so much about this nonetheless yeah. it bears repeating mm -hmm. we are beginning the 2020 intuitive intensive on february 3rd 2020 so if you are watching this at a different time when we're not in the intensive you can still go to the lightworkers lab Dot com because we run uh, many intensives in one year. But the Intuitive Intensive is a program that has been specifically designed to deeply connect you spiritually and metaphysically to who it is that you are as a spiritual being showing up on this planet. And also it's designed to blast open your psychic abilities and up-level you in this way. And so if you're somebody who has a sense that there is more to life out there, but you just don't know how to connect with that or amplify Amplify that in your own life, then this program is great for you. If you're someone who maybe feels a bit disempowered in, spir in spirituality or doesn't necessarily understand how it all works, this is a great program for you. We really do take students through uh, the entire spectrum of learning. We start with the foundational stuff, which is you understanding who it is that you are and how powerful you are and what it is that you can do through these faculties. For example, your ability to have dynamic visions and dreams or your ability to be clairvoyant, your ability to meet and work with angels and guides and all of these things. All of that is possible and this program is created to give you the infrastructure you need to connect to it and then launch. It's, it's a dynamic program. We already have about 150 people right now getting ready to start next week, but there's always room for more. And the community aspect, I won't talk too long, <laughs> but the community aspect is really such a wonderful facet of this. It's a large community, but you can buddy up with other folks. You can meet people who are on your same wavelength. You can meditate together. You can get to know one another. And I have to say, it can be lonely out there mm. when you're spiritual or when you're seeking or when you're trying to fine tune. It's hard sometimes to find friends. And I count myself as very lucky, lucky to have found Trisha Carr, but this is a great program that not just gives you tons of content, but access to other people who are a lot like you. Mm -hmm. So it's fantastic. I encourage anybody who's considering it register. Now we start on the fourth. Is it the third or the fourth? Uh, well, I think we our first Tuesday. class is, is on Tuesday the 4th, but yeah, the, the sort of we the last day to register is February 3rd, 2020. And it actually is so ridiculously affordable so far as cash is concerned. Yes. And that, I mean, it comes out, I think it comes out to something like 30 or 40 bucks a week. I can't remember what the math is. It's ridiculously affordable. Now, the resource that you want to consider even more than the affordability in, in the sense of cash is just time. You want to be able to be... Uh, you know, dedicated. It isn't something that's like 30 minutes a week. It's in order for you to get the full value, you want to commit to having yourself spend. It's going to be about three to five hours per week. And, and you, it could be more how much you engage in the community. And on the other hand, some people do take it passively. You have access to the material and even the community well after the live program is over. And if, if for the people who do take it live as well, they go over the material again on, on their own. So, you know, those are the options, but it definitely is something that is immersive. And it, we, we don't, we're not just out there just saying a cute, few cute things and then, and then we peace out. We're, <laughs> we're going in. <laughs> we had our, um, first kind of meeting last night, it was pretty casual just to help folks get into the mindset of the intensive and prepare for the intensive. And I have to tell you the energy there last night, I, it was so high vibe. It was so loving. People are so excited. People are asking questions. People are leaning in. And this is a program that's suitable for all levels. Yeah. So if you don't, if you know next to nothing about metaphysics and all this stuff, it doesn't matter. You'll get what you need. If you're somebody like me, who's been out in these intuitive spiritual streets for decades, that's okay. This program is also a great fit for you. And it really is about your commitment, suitable to all levels, but we're looking for serious students only. Yes. 
With that, let's get into our topic. Well, I should say that the link is in the description, however you are listening or watching, and do join us. We would love to have you. We'd love to have your light. And so now to our topic. So as I mentioned, there is an article. It's, it's actually been out you know, since 2013, and I actually came across it before I met Crystal, and at that time, it, it sort of it was is interesting. As I read it, the title of it is Why I Am No Longer a Light Worker. And at that time, I was like, I'd heard the term light worker. I didn't, I was lukewarm. I didn't really care about it. I wasn't going around saying, I'm a light worker. So it wasn't because it was sort of calling me out about something specifically. However, I have to say, I think Cameron, who's the author of it, is doing great work here. And I think he is genuine in sharing his experience. But as I read it, because there is a layer of kind of defense and fear and and I don't mean that as a criticism at all. That's a human experience. But as that, as I read through it, it was a weird experience to me because I both saw this fear kind of like washing through me while at the same time this presence that was like, you know, you don't need that fear. And I'm like, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> kind of put me in this weird spot. So um, shall we, I guess we should give an overview of what it is that Cameron is writing about in this why I, I am no longer a light worker. Well, before we do that, let me just say that I actually didn't come to this um, philosophy or information through Cameron Day. I actually heard a, a radio program mm -hmm. called Coast to Coast. I think it was on Coast to Coast and Art Bell was the host and he was talking to one of his uh, folks there and that person warned Art not to go into the light when he died, oh instead to turn away from the light because the light was a trap. And that got me curious, mm -hmm. right? And then I started searching around and I, I did ultimately land on the article that you're speaking about. But I also, you know, I don't know that this is how I was introduced to David Icke, but David Icke talks a lot about this or something similar to this. So it's, it's not just yeah. this article, it's kind of a theme out there um, in the community. Mm -hmm. But yes, so what we're talking about in particular is this idea that the light that we encounter when we die is actually some kind of a trap. And this is, a, there's a sophisticated kind of mythology around this. And I do use the term mythology because I personally don't necessarily buy into it. Maybe some aspects of it resonate, but for the most part, not really. But as that mythology goes, when we die, we see this light and we are often encountered, uh, we often encounter or are met by beings. And depending on your frequency, depending on your belief system, those beings can vary. Now, Cameron Day, I know, refers, refers to these beings as the Lord of Karma, which is also a term used in theosophy to speak about a kind of governmental body of ascended masters that oversees the earth. He calls them the Lords of Karma, but they can pretty much be anyone specific to what you're expecting to experience and also specific to your belief system. So if you are a Christian, you might see Jesus. You might see Mary. If you are a Buddhist, you might see Buddha. If you are agnostic, you might see your mom or your dad. But you, you tend to meet these folks and they encourage you to go into the light. Once you go into the light, you go through the life review and they show you aspects of the life that you've just lived with kind of a focus on the things that you did wrong. And it feels like the point of it is to kind of guilt you into saying, oh my gosh, I, I made a lot of mistakes and I really shouldn't have done that. At which time these beings say, well, we would like you to send you back to earth so that you can make up for these things that you did and realign your karma. Or they'll say, you're not ready yet to move on to heaven. And so there's some things that you need to do. And this is kind of how they get back. They get you to go back into an incarnation. And this is supposed to be, this is allegedly a grand deception. And the Lords of Karma or these beautiful loving beings are actually parasitical kind of entities that just want you to get back into the loop of reincarnation and get back to the planet and essentially become a slave of sorts to their matrix because I think the idea is, and here, here I, I haven't spent a ton of time looking at all of this, but I think the idea is that there is this grand matrix that surrounds our planet and we have these overlords, if you will, or we have these beings that are invested in us staying here and generating a specific kind of energy that they ultimately 
somewhat feed on and it builds up this matrix. But there is a landscape beyond the earth and the earth matrix and this is the free universe. And we are free souls when we come from freedom. And so what Cameron Day says is when you die and you see these beings and they show you this life review, you reject it. And you say, I am sovereign. I am not going to be reincarnated or I am not going to be looped back into the earth matrix. And you essentially refuse. At which point, I think he says, um, they often show you a different life review of a past, past life, life. Yeah, past that life had. And guilt you even deeper. And he right, says, where it's you were a past life Hitler. that isn't yours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right, you were a terrible person and like, look at your past lives though. You did so many bad things. You really need to atone for these sins until people capitulate. Mm -hmm. And I guess, according to this idea, many, many, many of us do. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's, that's it kind of in a nutshell. There's way more details, a lot more nuance, but what people are wondering is, can I trust the light? Right. And can I trust the beings that meet me and I thought the life review was a good thing. And so it's throwing some folks into confusion. Now that's my take on it, Tricia. Mm -hmm. Why don't you share what you know about it? Yes, that is a great overview. Uh, in addition to the Lords of Karma, these uh, this, these beings are referred to as the Archon, A-R-C-H-O-N, and David Icke refers to them as such. And the other uh, term that is bandied about is false light. These are false light beings. And then so there's light beings and then there's false light beings. And the, I remember Cameron saying something to the effect of paraphrasing entirely, if you reject it and you reject the false past life that you are shown, then essentially you will truly be free then. And your, your consciousness, your soul will be able to soar through the free universe and calls these beings the um, like great violators of free will. I think Cameron calls them the turds of karma. Yeah, he loves to make <laughs> jokes. He says the turds of karma. <laughs> it's funny. It's yeah. silly. And and uh, also that what is called what is um, brought into this conversation of false light. Anytime people are talking about false light, they also say essentially any archangel, archangel Michael, or any archangel Michael is or archangel in general is really archon beings. You know what I mean? Like they're all false and. So yeah, that is a good overview. And so even when I first read, well, is there anything else we need to add before we kind of start to break down our, our thoughts and feelings and opinions? Um, I, I mean, the, the role of the Demiurge, which is sort mm. of this lower God that yeah. is the God of the earth, um, which yeah. is, I think as far as the Gnostics are concerned, kind of a petulant child of the real God or whatever, right. but the, there's just this hierarchy, hierarchy being yeah. very important and the ex expectation that we as, you know, these souls here on earth have to kind of fall into line as part of this hierarchy when the true calling is to break out of the hierarchy. We aren't constrained by any of that, mm -hmm. which Cameron says as well. Yeah. And right. And also the idea of the reason that these parasitic false light beings compel folks to continue to engage in the wheel of karma and reincarnation is similar to the 1999 movie the matrix it's like they feed that's which is interesting that the matrix is so well, i mean i think there's a connection yeah. i think there's totally. a reason that this is showing up in our consciousness and awareness in the way that it is very intricate details i think a lot of this is being extrapolated yeah. pulled from the matrix and other sci-fi type of resources well and when i saw the matrix though this was 1999 i remember seeing it and and being freaked out a little and saying this is true and I don't know why I know it's true and it's something true about it so there is but you can even just keep it on this planet you know what I mean like our mental emotional energy that we you know being enslaved to an extent by governments and uh, commercialism and everything keeps us in the wheel of consumerism you know what I mean like there's a lot of reasons why that would ring true for us and we don't even have to take it out into the cosmos for it to ring totally true right but humans like to build philosophies and dogmas and doctrines mm -hmm. based on an intuition based on a sense of something that's true they they, yeah. they like to anthropomorphize and make it applicable to their life experience and in this way i think that there are some things about this that that do resonate that, totally. that seem like it could be possible yeah. but at the end of the day 
it doesn't matter. It, doesn't it matter. really doesn't matter. I actually was listening to a near-death experience of someone, and I apologize, I can't recall who it was, who passed, uh, saw Mother Mary, mm-hmm. and then asked Mother Mary to ask Mother Mary, are you really Mary? Show me who you really are. And Mother Mary transformed into a different being, not an evil one though, or not an archon or mm-hmm. parasite Lord of karma, but into a different being of light. The, the fact of the matter is that our sovereignty is paramount. Yes. Nobody can take that away from us. Mm-hmm. Nobody can sever our connection to spirit, God, creator. Is there a possibility that we are relegated to certain experiences or roles after we pass? Is it a possibility that we might come back and reincarnate? Yes, nobody truly knows. But what I do know is that I make the ultimate decision. Mm -hmm. And so for a while with this, I kind of got a little, like you, I kind of got a little disturbed. I know Art Bell was deeply disturbed. But then I realized I have dominion. I am divine. I am a free soul. And I also, when I'm standing in the energy of that, I can read other energy, especially lower level energy, Mm -hmm. no matter how they mask it, no matter what that frequency is. I have the discernment as a divine being to know the quality of that being. And I think another thing that Day talks about is that when we leave our body, when we die, we start shedding the different layers of our individual personality, our earthly personality. And as we do, this light emerges from us. Mm -hmm. And these Lords of Karma are said to sort of mirror that back to us, our own light, and pretend that it's actually theirs. And we become ensorcelled by that light and get all deceived and such. But that light that emerges from us, irrespective of all that all the other trappings of that, that's true. We are light. And Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. Jesus also said, anything I can do, you can do better. And so (laughs) what that means is you too Mm -hmm. are the light of the world. And we can trust that. Mm -hmm. And we can trust love. And so I'm not going to overly worry about what might be when I pass. I know that I'll go through a transitional process as I do shed the trappings of the earth reality, but I know I'm going to be clear. I know I'm going to be in my dominion. I know I'm going to be sovereign. And I think I can trust that. How about you? It comes down to the hermetic principle, the hermetic tenet of as above, so below. And again, you can describe all of this goings on in some kind of ethereal plane of existence, but let's just look at being here and now and can do humans get manipulated do humans get into let's say this sounds like someone giving a warning about getting into a cult and there's this leader and there are all of the person's workers and you know minions and everything and they guilt you and they compel you and they hypnotize you and brainwash you that can happen right here but when you watch one of those do you get scared you, you shouldn't. You don't need to. And the same is true in above, in the higher frequency or in the less material frequencies. The truth is, when I some of my takeaways from this, like when they say, oh, all of the archangels are false. Archangel Michael coming to you is false. I'm like, we're talking about semantics then. Does it, it makes total sense that if someone can come to me and say, I am in, the, in human life and say, I'm sent by God. And so you need to come into this and atone for your sins and then, you know, brainwash me into a cult. Then, of course, someone can come and say to me in the ethers, I'm Archangel Michael. That's not a protected name, as Crystal and I talk about when we talk about the Bible, that it's not forgive us no offense to anyone the bible is not an infallible book it's just a book like anything else it passes through the hands of humans and therefore can be edited and you know co- coerced into different textual it's not it's not a, a, a magical book that you can rip a page out and it will spontaneously regenerate in the same way that words like archangels and michael and names are just words they're just signposts that are helping us to point to the real thing underneath which is that frequency which is the true light and as you said jesus said i am the light of the world and i actually interpret that as he says the i am 
my I am, your I am is the light of the world. And that speaks to that, that sovereignty and that dominion. And yes. so I think that perhaps why this strikes a chord of fear and like Art Bell and like it did for me is that perhaps we actually have it a bit accurate that there is a going into the light and a life review and all of that. And then so they kind of copped that system in the way that, you know, you if, a, if on the earth there was a cult that would cop a certain system that actually rings true to the human nature or to the nature of beings and but the thing that is off for me as I read through it the first time as well as this recent time is well but I don't think that these beings are higher or better than me or that they are a greater authority I don't think that Archangel Michael is a greater authority than I am I think he has a different perspective I don't think that any of the beings that I would be communing with I think we're partners because that's we're partners in the one I am and the life review process for for example even the way that I understand it without this context this suggestion is probably a, a also a mythology that is pointing to something even greater and more nuanced that I can't totally grasp from this perspective but as a system it might be kind of a facet of what is going on but how I see the life review process is all about compassion absolutely no guilt so I would be like what are y'all talking about I'm not supposed to be guilty now <laughs> I'm supposed be, to be celebrating that would be your first hint that there's something wrong with that process <laughs> right I think it does point us to something. It can be so very helpful because it's pointing us to that we need to not believe or or vibrate to hierarchy. We need to we need to vibrate to the one energy that my I am is as perfectly imperfect as every single possible one, whether we give it the name Unbutu or Archangel Michael. It doesn't matter. Those are just signposts for the true frequency of the one energy. And so there's no need to be in fear. No. And that's your first hint. If it's throwing you into fear, then it's not in alignment with right. source energy. Right. Perfect love, which is source energy, mm -hmm. casts out all fear. Not to be too scripture intensive. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Including and he that is the in cosmo. the matrix <laughs> of this world. Greater is the discernment in me. Mm -hmm. Greater is the energy and the divine in me than he that is in this world. And we can, like I said, we can trust that. With regard to what we're talking about, uh, I think people have taken this idea and, and really run with it. You have the uh, belief that there are physical and etheric implants. Mm -hmm. When we go to sleep at night and we go astral and we start traveling, that we are tagged in the etheric um, that we are flagged in the etheric, that we came into this incarnation with agreements, karmic agreements imposed upon us that we are bound by. And so we're here in this world. Um, there's also an idea that we maybe started out thinking we were going to be reincarnated. Okay, I guess I'll do it if I have to. But I want to be Kim Kardashian, though. I don't want to show up and have a terrible suffering experience. I want to have a blessed experience. And you're promised this. And then you start making your way down the pathway of the etheric birth canal into your earth life and you get bumped. You get bumped into some, you know, impoverished country or household or weird parents and it's not what you, you it's not what you thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. um, who, cares? who cares? Here we are. So what? <laughs> Here we are having this conversation and I am very clear. It doesn't matter about the trappings of the world. And if, if I have etheric implants, my dominion, my divinity expels them effortlessly, truly. Mm -hmm. I talk often about something called the pulse technique, and I'll often do a meditation when I'll just where I'll just fill myself with brilliant light, the light existing within me and also the light of God, the love of God. I'll just fill myself to brimming and then I'll pulse it and I'll pulse it out through my body. I'll pulse it through the structure of my mind and then i'll pulse it out through the aura the chakras my grid i'll just keep pulsing and everything all the detritus all the spiritual problems all the perforations are healed by that light that's just something that i do for management and maintenance but you know i've been under attack before mm -hmm. trisha spiritually and psychically and if i'm not very conscious about what's happening I can get deceived into thinking that life is just happening to me and I can react to that. But when I stop and take a beat and I get into my sovereignty, my dominion, I am the consciousness in control of this experience. And I vibe that way. 
it is expelled from my experience. And so the challenge isn't to get so afraid by all this, all the things people are talking about. It's always to align back to your own power. The pathway is there and the truth is there. You don't have to worry about any of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's this principle that, you know, what, how we actually come into the greatest position of power or creativity is when we're in the almost like the neutral position, the objective position, where we aren't, where we are outside of polarity, but we are witnessing polarity and seeing that it is valuable. That's something else that is talked about in this mythology is duality and polarity and how they're maintaining that in order to be able to feed off of it, like the, you know, as the parasitic false light beings. And but we have we have a third option, which is the one option. It's not even the third option. It's the singular option where we're still observing polarity and and realizing that that is just an expression of the one energy in a way to be able to expand and to question and grow. And a duality or a polarity like a paradox is how we actually come into that observer position really powerfully and spirit. It was, and I'll say it, it was while I was talking to some archangels, I don't remember who, because they don't care who, but when I was in that kind of energy and I was given this principle that radical responsibility and radical surrender is this powerful energy, this place to be in which seems like a dichotomy or like I say, a paradox is really where you come into back to that position of the one energy. Because if you have radical responsibility, as we're talking about in sovereignty, but also surrender, because surrender brings you into that deep place of wisdom and also connecting to the entirety of the one energy, because you're surrendering to the system of love, this, the, the one energy that is already there. And you're also coming up to the energy of it with your responsibility. And we've talked about that before when recently you were saying, why have I created this po social political situation in the world that is, you know, not in my front yard? I didn't deliberately and specifically vote for. But that is how we can actually grow. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Everything's an invitation. Mm -hmm. The video, uh, the podcast that we did on Thought Forms, I put yeah. a clip of that up on my YouTube and someone there who I, I think is great and respect said that he thought that um, thought forms and the self-generating kind of creation of thought forms when it wasn't as big of a deal, and I'm totally paraphrasing, as what's kind of going on in the fourth dimension with the archons and the reptilians. And mm -hmm. that's where all of this is, that's where the influence is coming for this chaotic world. And I'm like, I don't think so. I think what we're seeing is an outpicturing of our collective consciousness. I think we're all thinking in a certain wavelength. I think we are envisioning in a certain way, and now it's being outpictured. That's just my personal opinion, but it does lead to that position of personal responsibility. I am responsible for what I am experiencing in my life. That's not to say that the things that happen to us that harm us or are traumatic, are abusers, that's not to say we deserve it, right. but it is our responsibility to take all of this information, all of this stimuli and channel it into the vision that we have for ourselves, our families, but truly this world. And it's possible by the, by the, by the modification of your own frequency and vibration, you can change everything. I've told you the story about VW. <laughs> I, I don't want to go into it, but like I, I firmly oh, yeah. believe this may sound crazy that my, my desire us to have a certain amount of money one year and not really knowing when that, where that was going to come from, but just trusting that the world was going to align to my desire to manifest that caused a certain, <laughs> caused some <laughs> events that ultimately came through for me yeah. right in the pinch when I needed it the most. And people will say, well, that's absolutely crazy. This was in the works years before. Yes, I know. We don't exist um, in time. We're not constrained by time and space and rules. We truly do exist as divine beings. And if we have the belief that my future is going to be this, it's going to be beautiful. I'm going to have what I need. I don't know how to solve that problem. I just know it's going to get solved. Everything in the universe, make sure that everything is arranged around you to give you what you believe that you already have. 
it remi- that reminds me your story of something happened with what she's talking about. There, a certain corporation, something had been going on, <laughs> and then they had to pay out people, and <laughs> that's what she's saying without having like to go. The exact them. amount that I needed <laughs> was the exact amount of that payout yeah. plus like a thousand dollars, and I was like, "Do you see what I can do? Do you see <laughs> yes. how powerful we actually are? We're manifestors." And it's so cool to to be in that in all of it, you know, to say, "My yes, of course, there is this layer of time space reality where you would say, well, that is, that's not logical. Cool. I don't care. I don't care about that. I am, I am outside of time and space and my I am energy. One time when I connected with this tree and was telepathically communicating with this tree and like, I, I put my hands on the tree and there was like one hand was on a, sh- a shade, shaded part that was cool. And one hand was on a warm part that was in the light. And I just said, oh, that's a, that feels so neat, you know, telepathically or just like experiencing it. And the tree said, thank you. I grew here so you could have that experience. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> what? This tree has been growing for how long? <laughs> Decades or something. But he was the he. I don't know. It's not a, there's no gender. But he was kind of telling me, yes, this moment as much as any. It, this singular moment is is as red letter as important as any other moment that is in, in alignment, you know? That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. You know, what comes to mind as we're talking about responsibility and as you said, and again, the layer of all of the perspectives are have validity. So as you said, yeah, we don't deserve things that are messed up in our life, but we have responsibility. And while I'm saying that words or semantics, we can get a bit lost in them, but they still are pointing to different frequencies. And that's just how we, that's how we orient humans. The word responsibility really means your ability to respond. And so it's pointing to that sovereignty, to being able to shift your frequency. The word responsibility is a different frequency than the word fault, which is telling you that you're wrong and broken and in error. Those are that's different, you know, to say that I deserve this is saying that you're at fault, but being responsible is an empowered position to say, I have the ability to shift and change and to come into alignment and change my frequency, which then will uh, will change my physical reality. Yes, I think some some folks, though, when they are faced with this responsibility, they are very loving of Mm -hmm. the things that they've been clinging to that have allowed them to be in certain behaviors and victimize themselves or present as a victim in the world, or they are very loving and um, covetous of the anger and the unforgiveness that they have for their abusers or for the things that went wrong. It really is a, a call to be brave and a call to be courageous, to be willing to unhook from that and let it go so that you can get into the empowered position. Because even though, that was wrong. All those things that happened to you, that was wrong. And those people were wrong. And yeah, everybody has a right to be upset about that. You can be upset about something, but if you hold on to it and stay hooked into it and cause your own suffering, then you're the one who's doing that. And we're all called to let that go, set it aside and get into that empowered position because only in that empowered position can you start to create the, the love and the life that you want. If you hold on to the unforgiveness, if you hold on to the shadow, you are going to continue to create from that because those are patterns of energy. They are vibrating. They are signaling. Your hatred is signaling. Mm -hmm. Your unforgiveness is signaling. Your fear is signaling. And the signal is a manifest, a call to manifestation. You are going to create circumstances. The better thing to do is to resolve that. Let it go. Let the light deal with that and get into the empowered position. The empowered position that I'm in right now, that you're in right now, that doesn't go away when we die. (laughs) In fact, the clarity, there's even more clarity. There's an amplification of that which we know is true. I I, I hesitate to say, I don't think we can get tricked, but I I actually don't know. And and there are people who hold on to dogma and hold on to faith that, that might be tricked if this system is true. But if you are clear about your divinity and if you are clear about your power, it's not going to go away when you die. Right. You'll still be clear there too. And you will know them by their fruit. And the fruit here is the love. And the frequency. And we will know them by the that. frequency. And, you know, yeah, can you be tricked? Again, well, I guess in a certain way, I have been tricked in my physical life. But as I move out of that trickedness, when I when I kind of come out of that illusion, I'm like, nah. you know how you do? You go, man, there are red flags. And oh, I should have known better. And right. yeah, I let that go. When you actually get out of the, the identity to it, then you can grow from it. 
And this actually, I want to speak to also, as we're talking about blame, fault, right, wrong, is it is to say that that we're not we're not suggesting that sort of spiritual bypassing when you release unforgiveness let's say as crystal and i have both done because we come from extreme abuse when you release unforgiveness about something that sure in this experience is wrong it is wrong to harm another yes but we're we are multi-dimensional we are omnidimensional so there are always there's always a another perspective that we can shift to, to to be able to alchemize that which we may call wrong or experience in a certain discernment as inaccurate or incorrect now there are reasons to make atonement there are reasons to make amends and that is in each and every one of our lives and so the, we're just acknowledging that 100 percent that when yeah. we when there is something that is incorrect in our behavior and our activity whether it's yours or someone else's then yes there is there is something to do that is that brings us to healing there is an opportunity to move toward healing and it does come down to the fact that, you know, we, it is about that frequency that we're running. If you are replaying an abuse that you've experienced, the energy doesn't know the difference, doesn't care about the difference of it happening physically right now or not. And so in a manner of speaking, energy is so literal that you are, it, you are inflicting abuse upon yourself. So you've become the abuser. You are literally vibrating the exact same frequency, sorry to say. And I don't say this as a, in a way to blame. I'm saying it to myself. This is something I had to say to myself to just get to the place of releasing unforgiveness. Not because I'm saying I condone what another person has done, but that's where we truly can make change in the world. The polarization in politics and arguments, either side, however right or wrong, correct or incorrect they are, when they're anger, when they're in anger and and, and more of the blame and shame and the other then they they're vibrating the exact same frequency and the change isn't happening in that frequency amen absolutely amen. yeah i mean i absolutely. think we did it i think we i think we covered it. <laughs> well i mean here's the thing <laughs> if you're in a faith system yeah. that causes you to doubt and feel disempowered and be afraid it's probably that it's probably not the right system for you mm -hmm. if you're at a church where they cause you to doubt and feel afraid and feel unwashed, then it's probably not the right church for you. And if you're in a religion that does this, or if you are caught up in this fear matrix yeah. system of, of ideas and philosophies, and it's causing you to doubt and feel disempowered, and now I got to go find a practitioner to take out all my implants, and oh my God, what about these contracts? That is not clarity. That is not comfort and peace. That is not truth. That is not true. That's your first signal that you need to get out of that frequency, probably, and I would say out of that system and go wandering for a little while. Mm -hmm. Go wandering and start praying and start thinking and start seeking, seeking source energy yeah. purely. Come as you are. Guess what? Anytime we ask God, spirit, source to show up, to answer a question, it never fails. God always does. And God tells the truth. And you know that truth when it hits you. Your physical body knows it. Your spirit knows it. Your mind knows it. It's so clear. And it also contains what we call the peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah. It's how we're able to live in this world, but not really be of it like aliens here in this experience. Yes, I'm showing up in 3D as a human. And yes, there's a lot that's going on here in 3D and 4D, but I'm not of that. I'm of the stuff of divinity. And if you feel that and connect to that, you don't really have to worry about anything else. It's all there is. It's really simple. Yes. Not easy necessarily. Not easy, but, but simple. simple. That's the that's the the thing. It's it's so difficult for us to let things be simple because. Well, I think people you know, like. I think people like. Complexity. It's an identity. It's something to yeah. identify to, and it it's a false kind of clarity it's a false grounding in a way to have all the details and the complexity about things right yeah and if it makes you feel better to go and see a practitioner who's going to remove your implants or cut your contracts or take out your chakras or whatever if that makes you feel better um then okay but it's it's also a kind of spiritual bypassing because there is there is nothing more powerful than what exists inside of you there is no greater clarity or understanding than that which exists inside of you. The kingdom of heaven, which is the connection to source energy, divine energy, that exists within you, nobody else. Of course, practitioners are helpful. I am a practitioner. 
but do we need them in order to enlighten? Absolutely not. And the more rewarding journey is the one that you you take on your your own. Yeah, we don't and need them. It's, it's like we get them. You know what I mean? I've been trying to change my language about like, oh, what, do you, what do you have to do tomorrow? Well, tomorrow I have to such and such. And I'm like, no, no, right. no, no. Tomorrow I get to. You know what I mean? Like it's an opportunity. It's a thing that I created to play in. And another piece of uh, that that – as you say, you know, we're not in the world, we're not of the world, we're, we're in it, or, you know, it, it is also a vein of probably more in the spiritual community that is more of the new age ascension metaphysical is this idea of I don't belong here, I need to get out of here, denying this form, this long suffering. And that's a kind of denial as well. It's different when we're talking about really being the whole of who you are, all of it, including this experience that you're creating in the physical and loving and embracing it, yet not being limited to it. That's really what we're talking about. But that's also another signal of being in some kind of system or um, organization of thought saying that I, this sucks and and everybody here sucks and I'm I don't belong here and you know what I mean you, you know Absolutely. what I'm vibing on I'm there really, right I'm really my yeah. I'm really from Pleiades or whatever and yeah. I'm not saying that we don't have connections to these things yeah. but no you are a human and you signed up to be a human and in fact depending on how your perception is and your filter life is beautiful it's as beautiful as you make it and humanity is beautiful. People are beautiful. You are beautiful. And when you believe that, that's what you begin to experience in life. And it's a form of spiritual bypassing yeah. to say, I don't belong here. I don't know why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't allow you to take responsibility as the conscious creator that you are who came here to create a kick-ass life for yourself. Now you just get to be suffering. See, pain is rooted in an experience. Mm -hmm. Suffering is the choice that we make to prolong pain. Yes. That's a choice you visit upon yourself. Nobody else does for you. It shouldn't be a suffering experience to be a human. It's an opportunity and an invitation to create something better. And all the people said, hey. <laughs> all right. Well, that's don't what we have afraid, to say. There's it. nothing to be afraid of. No, no. That's the thing. Just don't that's be afraid. Right. If it's making you afraid, let it go, let it go. because you don't need to live that way. And so do check out the article if you like. We'll, we'll post a link to it. Um, you know, if and likewise, if you're reading it and you're like, ah, that's a lot, that's fine too. I actually, he has a second article, a follow-up about breaking the contracts with these beings. And I didn't finish that one because I was like, I get it. You know? <laughs> and I'm I mean, not meaning to criticize Cameron. I think that his heart probably is exactly. absolutely genuine. He is meaning to help. And this was his true experience. So I definitely, that's my absolutely. vibe on reading all of it is like, oh, I, I hear you. And, but I just think it may be, a bit not not as threatening as you know you're not saying. It's, you, not <laughs> it's not important it's not important when compared with who you truly are and again not to diminish not to say it's not important to cameron or some other people it's I, just ov overall not important to the soul to the soul amen well we will say once again the 2020 intuitive intensive the doors are open for just a few more days we would love to have you and we it's just gonna be i mean we talked about it a lot it's going to be amazing do go and check out go read about it because we the the information page we have about it is pretty detailed and really talking about all of the content that we're going to be going into and with that crystal and compton do you have any last words I don't think so. Um, this was fun. Thank okay. you for having me. We'd love to see you in the program. Um, if not this year, maybe next year. Uh, if you can't join the program, please consider joining our online community, the Lightworkers Lab. You can go to the lightworkerslab.com to learn how to do that. Or you can just search for us on Facebook. We have almost 10,000 members and we'd love to have you as well. What a fun episode. And you guys, if you didn't hear the last one, go check it out. We talked all about thought forms, ghost entities, 4D. And you know what? We out, we wound up with you're amazing and beautiful and, and completely empowered. So we always do. We always do because that's the truth. If When something is true, it is true from all perspectives. Okay, then. That's this episode. Thank you again to Crystal Ann Compton. And I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Mm -hmm.